are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the College Loop Podcast, episode 101 of the College Loop Podcast. We are now officially over triple digits. No longer just on triple digits, but now over triple digits. Uh, but I'm here today joined by Harrison Tar. Tar, how you doing, buddy? Hey, man. No complaints. Another day in paradise. Glad to be talking Auburn ball in the loop. Arkansas prep day. Time to, to preview a little bit of Auburn versus the Hogs and Really excited to actually be able to spend some time talking about Looper's takes and uh, and, and talk about you, the takes of the listeners. You guys brought the heat in the comments. Most of you guys brought the heat in the comments, um, and we've uh, we've pretty much pulled out almost everything from uh, from last show. And I'm really really excited um, to to touch base with all you guys. Get your feelers. Obviously, the quarterback situation's ongoing, um, and a lot of people shared their thoughts with that. So. Between that barbecue and uh, Christopher Nolan, man, I'm I'm excited to, to to get to that segment, but don't want to overshadow any of the important Auburn news that comes first. So, Dylan, I'm throw you the keys. Let's do it. Yeah. So we talked about it. I want to say about a week and a half ago, maybe, uh, with the uh, coaches poll that came out. We were all very excited about the coaches poll because we thought it looked probably the best out of any coaches poll we've seen in recent memory. But now the AP poll is out, and it's okay. Yeah. It's not bad. It's It's not terrible. It's not anything too special. I mean, I don't even want to spend time grieving about it because it's the AP poll preseason. Like, what the hell? Yeah. It's worth mentioning the fact that Auburn is going to be playing five of the teams per, I I believe this also per Yush, uh, with three of those teams all being in the top five. Auburn is going to play Georgia, Bama. And Ole Miss, who is at 22 at home, uh, Georgia at one, Bama at four, the lowest ranking for Bama since 09. Uh, don't read too much into that like most people are. Uh, this Bama team is the least talented we've seen in a while. They're not winning national championship over the teams above them. Uh, but Auburn will also play at LSU, the number five team in the country, and the number 24, 23 team in the country in Texas A&M. Yeah, a is really the only head-scratcher for me here, by the way. Um, like, the only one that I'm just like, what the heck? Um, I don't see it, but neither here nor there. Typical resume for Auburn. Uh, the path, per usual, can never be more clear to how do you get to the college football playoff, is that if that's on the table, obviously, right? That's a lot yeah. of things got to got to go that way. But the table set, once again, for Auburn to have, per usual, one of the toughest schedules, if not the toughest schedule in the country. And uh, this is just kind of life uh, that you live as an Auburn fan. So uh, this should not come as a shocker to anyone. I will say we will see how many of these teams wind up being ranked when Auburn plays them. I think three of them are locks. Two of them are shaky. And there's a reason that they're in the mid 20s or early 20s for that for that reason. I do expect Ole Miss to still be there. I do not expect Texas A&M to remain there. Actually, I I just don't understand why Texas A&M even deserves to be ranked preseason to be completely candid. Uh, if, it, if it's based on last year's argument, then I guess Auburn should be, what, that, they're 23 or 24, right? Let me look again. A&M 23, that means Auburn should be 23B, I guess. I mean, yeah. if you're looking at last year's <laughs> final standings, um, that's just bizarre. But beyond that, I mean, Dylan, this is just nothing out of the ordinary, man. This is It's a it's another football season on the plains. You're not lying. And, and just to let everybody know, Auburn was on the – oh, well, that's depressing news that came up on my phone. Uh uh, if you're a FC fan, uh, Alex Collins, former Arkansas legend at running back, uh, he just got pronounced dead uh, from Bleacher Bleacher Report. Just shot that up. Dang, that's that's sad, man. Very sad. Uh, re- pray for his family and all close to him. But uh, it's worth mentioning that Auburn is currently on two of these guys' ballots. Uh, Brian Fonseca, who's a Rutgers guy, ranked Auburn at 20. And Brett McMurphy, who's an Oklahoma State guy, ranked Auburn at 24. So Auburn is on this list somewhere. Uh, Brett McMurphy's been pretty open about how much higher he is on Auburn than a lot of people this year. Uh, I think that uh, McMurphy kind of expects Auburn to make a little more noise, similar to what what we think over here at the Loop and, and a lot of the guys at the Warp were kind of on the same way, kind of make a little more noise than anticipated. So let, let's, let's be honest here, folks. Auburn did not deserve to be ranked in the top 25. Um, and, and, not at all. Um, I, I'm, I'm just being candid with you. Uh, they certainly could wind their way up 
on 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 the, in the top 25 by the end of the season. I think that that road's clear as day. And and not only do I think it's clear, I think it's very plausible. So kind of all things considered, like I said, Dylan, just just a, another another day in paradise on, yeah. on the plains of, of Auburn, Alabama for for top 25 uh, opponents. I will say Auburn is currently ranked higher than the likes of Duke, Mississippi State, Florida, Illinois, Baylor, Coastal Carolina, NC State, and South Alabama, James Madison, and Liberty. Liberty got stuck in with one vote there as Good well. For them. But I will say. Jamie Chadwell at uh, Liberty, right? Yeah, Jamie Chadwell at Liberty, and I forgot who's a Coastal. Uh, Greg McCall is still there. Uh, but another head scratcher is just Iowa. Iowa's somehow snuck in at 25. <laughs> No, Iowa going to Iowa. I mean, it's just it's just kind of how it is. And this, like I said, it's all preseason top twenty five stuff. No need to no need to overlook it. Let's talk about a team that's not ranked in the preseason top twenty five uh, that, that Auburn will be playing on the road this year, and and the team that ended Brian Harson's tenure just a year ago. Auburn really does not like losing to Arkansas. They didn't do it very much in the past decade, not one bit. And and when that moment finally come came, we we knew it's it's time to move forward. Let's also not forget that Auburn probably should have lost to Arkansas in 2020 because Bo Nix definitely fumbled backwards. That is in the past. That, that I have really no bad. idea what you mean. I That was a clean spike that definitely was not thrown in the complete opposite way that it should have been. That was a, that was the hurricane game. I was there. Yes, it was. Yeah, I've never been so not. drenched at a football game in my entire life. Oh, I was drenched to a sweat uh, watching the replay. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's a, that's a fumble right there. That is a fumble. It, it, because it was a fumble. But that's, yeah, uh, that's neither here. Like, I like how the SEC a couple days later was like, yeah, that was a fumble, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah. Arkansas okay, has, has not lived that one down. And Arkansas is one of those teams. You know how you talk a lot, Dylan, about how Ole Miss fans think a lot, about, a lot more about Auburn than Auburn fans think about Ole Miss fans? Yeah. Um, that's probably a little little less valid now with the whole Kiffin drama and then Auburn eventually getting Hugh Freeze. I will probably die on the hill that Arkansas fans think infinitely more about Auburn than Auburn do Auburn fans do Arkansas fans. Um there was the Gus Malzahn connection, and then obviously the the Bonex alleged fumble, alleged, um, that was not called in 2020. And then Arkansas just kind of thinking that they're just inherently better. Um in the state of the program, better now, certainly not better than Auburn, but better now, um, you're not that guy, pal. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of dive into that. I, I know, Dylan, that you're, you're going to talk here for – I'm going I'm to let you open up the floor, and then, you know, I'm going to talk depth chart here in just a minute um, on the Ar Arkansas side. Um, the, ob the obvious given is K.J. Jefferson special. Let's go ahead and lay that one out and say that that is we, – we know who we're going to highlight. And – before we go forward, and a little, I'm going to rip Arkansas apart a little bit in a second. Oh, um, I just want everyone oh, to know that I'm not downplaying how talented KJ Jefferson is. And I'm not. I'm not downplaying that at all. And, and Rocket Sanders, it's worth. And Ro Rocket Sanders. Sanders, yes, yes. The rest of this program, go ahead, Dylan. Yeah. So as it stands right now, going into the Arkansas game, me and Tar currently have Auburn as a two-loss team at seven and five going into Fayetteville, Arkansas to take on the Arkansas Razorbacks, a team that just beat Auburn for the first time in seven seasons uh, and got very lucky uh, three years ago now with that Bo Nix stuff, uh, stuff that uh, is still message board material for Arkansas fans. But I just don't see the confidence behind the Arkansas Razorbacks this year. I get you got brought back KJ Jefferson you brought back Rocket Sanders, but I think he just, they lost too much, especially Kendall Bryles. I think that was the biggest loss of the offseason for the Razorbacks. He's now at TCU, which also a weird thing for them to get, bring a Bryles back to the Big 12, but that's neither here nor there. Mad weird. Mad weird. There's just not a lot about this team where I can just sit there and be like, yeah, this is definitely a better like position group than Auburn. I mean, Landon Jackson is good. But this is a – and Hudson Clark ha has shown that he can be good as well. But overall, this defense just isn't the best outside of the running back and quarterback. I just – I'm just not impressed. I, I don't really see the height that's coming up from Georgia fan or, or not, Arkansas fans. Sorry, same color red, uh, different animal. Uh, I just – I can understand the level of height that Sam Pittman brings to you uh, just from – being an offensive line coach, uh, and I mean, that brings up some hype 
and, and he's starting to turn the program to relevance. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. And whether that just be the fact that he he had, what a ten did he get a ten win season one year? Am I remember that correctly? Nine uh, win season, nine, nine, nine seven. and four, and then seven and six. Sam Pittman is a transitional coach. He is definitely, I don't want to call him a rebound, but I will. Uh, getting rid of a bad Brett Bulema, who is now really good at Illinois. Getting rid of a bad Chad Morris and moving on to a guy who can change the program. I think Sam Pittman is nothing more than a Ed Orgeron who has yet to have gotten his Joe Burrow. I was, I think he's somewhere between a Matt Luke and an Ed Orgeron. Um, just, just to be, just to be completely honest with you, I, know, I, talk I, about, I like that. Matt, Matt Luke's another one of those names that I say too much on the show. You love talking about Matt Luke. <laughs> um, I just don't want anyone to ever forget the fact that like Matt Luke happened, and he wasn't a horrifically bad coach. He was at a terrible spot. Um, I'll leave it at that. But, <laughs> but I, I, I think that that's where Sam Pittman falls. It's like he's a lovable guy. You put him on the on the Ed Orgeron spec- spectrum for that yeah. for sure. I don't even know that he's the recruiter that Ed Orgeron was. And uh, just just to be honest with you, and I don't, I don't know that he's a long-term answer for a program, but certainly get yourself back to that middle of the road where you, where you, where you could be as a baseline heartbeat, if you will. And I just, I'm not, I'm not super high when I look at the depth chart, Dylan, I'm, I'm not. And and I'm looking around, and, and like like you mentioned, you've got Rocket Sanders and KJ Jefferson in that backfield. That is something special. But when you begin looking around, I mean, the amount of transfer work that Arkansas had to do. Now, I know Auburn had to do more tra- transfer portal work than pretty much everybody in the country this year. But when you look at, at the amount of transfer portal holes that you had to go fill, because you lost so many guys, because got so many guys left the program and, and went elsewhere, it's – not necessarily comforting if you're an Auburn, uh, excuse me, an Arkansas fan. Andrew Armstrong, the senior transfer, redshirt uh, senior Isaac uh, Tesla, uh, senior transfer. That's your your X and Z receivers, and then you're you're probably going to start a redshirt freshman out of the slot. I mean, your next oldest uh, option is a junior um, uh, that has been buried in the depth chart for a while, and and, and Chris Harris. Um, I mean, if, if, you, if you look through, they've got depth and age, not depth, but age on the, in the trenches up front. But we're looking late enough in the season that if you're expecting to have all five of your of your guys in the, on, the, on the offensive line still in one piece, it's just probably not realistic. You, you don't want injuries upon anyone, but not being able to rotate anyone out. I mean, dude, if you look at this depth chart for, for Arkansas, freshman, sophomore, after that, after that first line of guys on, on, in your trenches where you do have most of your age, but freshman, redshirt freshman, redshirt sophomore, redshirt sophomore transfer, redshirt sophomore, redshirt freshman, freshman, true freshman. Whoa. I mean, that, that, that's concerning. That is concerning if, if, you're, if you're an Arkansas fan. And do I think that Arkansas could probably put together something that actually winds up beating Auburn and at that point I think would be an upset over Auburn? Um, yeah, probably. I, I think that they're capable of doing so because KJ Jefferson's that special. But you're also going to have to stop this Auburn offense, and I cannot believe I'm saying that. I mean, I just was not ready for this year to be like, oh, I think this Auburn offense could be very, very, very fun to watch. And I, and I actually have kind of gaslit myself into getting to that point. Th- this defense is – it exists. This Arkansas defense is one of the defenses of all time. Notice I didn't say the greatest. It's top 14 in the SEC. Yeah, it's it's top 14 in the SEC. When Oklahoma and Texas get here, it'll still be top 16. Um, I just – I don't know, man. I mean, you you lose, you've lost so much. I have a very, very hard time looking. And I'm, I'm in your camp. I can't sit here and look and say Arkansas is definitively better here. Now, if you put them side by side, and and, and you look about what we know from Auburn, what we know from Arkansas, on paper, this feels like this could be a pretty damn good game. And oh, yeah. especially when you put it in Fayetteville. The people of Arkansas, when the Hogs are even a little bit good, they're going to be there, and and that that they're one of those fan bases. It will be loud. Uh, it will be hostile. At that point, you know it's been a long time coming. You'll you'll have your your starter settled in. Knock on wood. If you're Auburn, uh, barring an injury, I just don't know. You've already played a tougher road environment by a mile. You've played two at this point. Correct me if I'm wrong, but both AM and LSU coming before this. And yeah. 
I, I want to make sure I wasn't just making that up out of my out of my butt because I'm a, uh, still a little bit asleep from my nap that I took earlier. But I'm I'm just not sold, Dylan. Yeah, and I mean we always talk about how bad Auburn's wide receiver core has been in the past, but returning production at the wide receiver in the wide receiver room is always important to any team. And Auburn did that uh, this, in, with the season. I mean, uh, you brought back Javarius Johnson, Coy Moore, and several other guys. There's not a single wide receiver on this Arkansas team from last year who was even in the top five of of uh, receiving yards. I mean, not counting Rocket Sanders, of course, but Matt Launders, Jaden Hazelwood, both gone. Trey Knox transferred to South Carolina. I mean – the wide receiver room just all got up and left Arkansas and you bring in some transfers and uh, you're going to start maybe a red shirt freshman. I, I just don't know. And you're looking at the, the skeleton roster built around KJ Jefferson and Re- rocket Sanders. And I know Arkansas fans want to say that KJ is the next coming of Cam Newton, but here's the thing. He's not, he's not, <laughs> he never will be. There will never be another Cam Newton. And I am sick and tired of hearing everyone talk about a guy who's only ever won nine games in his entire career as the most. Calling him Cam Newton is just so disrespectful. And it just begs the question, what are they seeing in KJ Jefferson that we're not? I mean, KJ Jefferson is a great quarterback. I put him at two or three in the SEC. But he's not Cam Newton. He's not going to be a Tim Tebow. He's not a guy who can take a team the distance. He's and certainly he's, Arkansas's X factor. Yeah. I don't think he's the X factor. Does that make sense? If a team is not healthy around him, KJ Jefferson is not going to perform like a miniature Cam Newton. He is going to perform like an Arkansas quarterback with no talent around him, which is what we've seen in the past. That's what we saw last year. And the thing about this year, there's no – Real proven depth behind KJ Jefferson, which Grant oh, behind him. I thought you meant you mean I was going to say around him, which we may know more about. What well, we will know more about that by that time comes. But I mean, hell, folks, come on. I mean, what are we? What are we supposed to buy into? I mean, I'm, giving, only- I'm giving other SEC teams plenty of just like good background quotes for when they go ten and two and like make a hype video and want to use my oh. audio clips. Someone else has to take the spotlight, of course. I mean, I've already been in an Auburn Height video. I know. So, you know. But Rocket Sanders is interesting to me. Uh, out of out of the two right now, I think he's the most important posi- important player on Arkansas's team because I think KJ Jefferson is just going to play at KJ Jefferson. I mean, I don't, I don't think he's going to do anything more special. But Rocket Sanders is a running back that kind of fits the mold of – other running backs we've seen from Arkansas, one of them being Derek McFadden. And I don't want to say he's the next Derek McFadden, but I definitely think he possesses some of the same X-factor material that Darren did. And with speed, the strength, and he's not Derek McFadden in the slightest, and I will not compare anybody to an all-time great uh, that Derek McFadden was. But if this Auburn linebacker core isn't settled in, isn't healthy by – what week are we in? Week 10? This has to be week 10. No, week 11 because of week 11. the week. Are we sure? I feel good about I that. Seven, seven and two. Coming into this game? Week 11. This week? Week 11. Yep. I'm not great at math, but that one checked out. I had to recheck my math. But if this Auburn linebacker room isn't healthy, if Austin Keys isn't healthy, if Eugene Asante isn't as great as we've been hearing he has been in the scrimmages, if, if Auburn has to find a way to put Cam Riley and Wesley Steiner in there at the same time, Rocket Sanders can rush for 150. Right. Plus. So it's all about Auburn staying healthy is the key to is the key for Auburn this game. Staying healthy through week eleven. Key, key to Auburn this season. Key to key to any team really is staying yeah. healthy. But going into a game where, like you said, can be very close and probably will be very close. Health is the key factor here. And I mean, if something happens with Katie Jefferson, I hope it doesn't. I mean, you got to feel kind of confident in your odds if Katie Jefferson's not in there. And with Auburn, at least you know that all three quarterbacks are kind of on the same wavelength about some things. But Malik Hornsby is gone. He went to North. He went to Texas State. He's over there competing with TJ Finley. Facepalm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, I like 
Auburn's chances of winning a game close in Fayetteville. I'll go and do it. 27-21 Auburn. 27-21 Auburn. I'm going to go 28-24 Auburn. Okay. Okay. So that leaves me and you now with eight and two going into New Mexico State. Then the Iron Bowl. Oh, that that nine win Auburn team walking to the Iron Bowl take that I took a couple weeks ago that you just so hated is looking like that's what's going to be on your mind. For those of you who are not watching the stream and you're listening to this one uh, on your on Spotify, Apple Music, whatever, wherever you find your podcasts, I want you to know I'm physically cringing at the fact that I've been drinking the Kool-Aid. Oh, uh, I, you're definitely taking some shots of the Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. Um, you're rattling you know bogging what? over there, man. As, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm rattling bogging the Kool-Aid. Uh, as the great Zach Blackerby always says, you know what? I guess I'm just going to boog. We're booging. <laughs> <laughs> why not why not well, before we get into loopers takes Dylan I it's it only makes sense that before we get into loopers takes we talk about feeling a little bit loopy yeah just my personal thoughts throw it up on the screen Dylan yeah oh <laughs> why even throw it on the screen when you're wearing the shirt look oh at you oh my god look at that, look at that if right you're there. feeling loopy and you want a shirt to match it head over to uh, www.thewarreport.com and pick up your own College Loop co-branded with the War Report Podcast Network. Feeling loopy t-shirts. We've got it in five colors. You want to click those real quick for them, Dylan? Yeah. So they can check out those five colors. We got a sweet lineup of these. Most comfortable shirt you will ever own in your life. I've got the black one. Dylan's got navy. We've also got the heather gray. Those solid navy. And yeah, we've got, if you want it, we got it. Honestly, just go check it out because the guys at the War Report did a great job. If you don't feel like typing that in the search bar, I get it. We've got it in the description to all of our podcast locations, whether that be on YouTube, Spotify, all the, the that fun stuff. So make sure to go pick up your very own feeling loopy t-shirt only available on www.thewarpour.com. Dylan, it's time for looper takes. Looper we're, takes. We're, we're still we're still gonna kind of workshop that, but like yeah. that's that's what we're going with right now. Your takes feeling loopy listener. with the loopers. That's really, something like that. Loop <laughs> looped in, maybe, maybe that works. Looped in, L- looped in. It's like LinkedIn, but the College Loop version. The All LinkedIn right. Podcast Network. So how we're going to run this one is Dylan's going to kind of run this, run these on the screen rapid fire. And we'll kind of take turns answering first. We'll both give our thoughts on some of them. Some of them geared more toward myself. Some of them geared, geared more toward Dylan. Some of them geared more toward barbecue. Very excited for those as well. <laughs> so, Dylan, let's let's go and run these. And if you're watching the YouTube version, this is going to be really, really fun because half my face is going to be cut off by half of this. And that's okay. I'm, I'm happy to, to be I'm doing everybody a favor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I've faced it only in Mother to Love. <laughs> I got a face for radio. I get it. Dylan, you ready to roll? Yeah. Starting Let's off with the chair with three R's. Just giving us a little happy 100. D chair, I love you. Thank you. We really, really appreciate you. And um, WDE, War Dam, right back. 100 episodes was something special. You guys blew it up. And 500 subs on YouTube, which we haven't even mentioned yet, by the way. Holy crap. Dude, um, my weekend has been wild. Yeah, I know. I, I celebrated a year with my beautiful girlfriend. I hit 500. We hit 500 subs on the college loop, and we hit 100 episodes all within the same weekend. That's yeah. just crazy. So, D chair, thank you. That, that's uh, that's so big time. Um, we do it because of you guys. Um, you're, you're the only reason we can. And your uh, y'all's outpouring of support from the jump has been tremendous. 500 subs before football season starts, Dylan. I mean, come on now, baby. Talk to me nice. Let's go. I mean, where did we have this have ourselves at before then? What, where was our target number? Yeah, what's our target number? 250 before football season. Was that really what we, what we were saying? We were saying like 200, 250 before football season. Um, That's crazy. You guys rock. Y'all guys are nuts. You guys are insane, and we love you. Um, let's go to the next roll, the next one. Uh, going back on one of your takes from the last episode, Tar, I'm talking about Oppenheimer. <laughs> Interstellar is my favorite movie of all time. Op was disappointing on many levels to me, I, and I hate to even say that because it's Nolan. That's from Papa Clown. I'm just going to guess there. I'm going to call him Pop. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, Pop. Uh, I, I was not disappointed in, in Oppenheimer. I get it was long. Um, the first, I'm just going to go ahead and say this on the air, Dylan. Sorry. The first sex scene, not necessary at all. I get it. Um, have you seen it yet, Dylan? I have not. 
Um, that th there were some parts that you could totally cut out, um, but it's it's a Christopher Nolan film. I mean, you, there are some parts where he just feels like putting stuff in there, so he's going to. Um, man, I'm just going to respectfully agree to disagree. Um, Interstellar, phenomenal film, and certainly better than Oppenheimer, but I, I wasn't disappointed. And uh, Opera, have to agree to disagree on this one, man. Um, but do me a favor if you're if you're if you're listening to this episode and you made it this far, drop your top three favorite Christopher Nolan movies. I'm interested. Or just top three favorite movies. We'll talk about that. Top three favorite it. movies. Yeah, Dylan's a, Dylan, Dylan's a cinema geek here. So yeah, we, yeah. we love movies over here. Uh, let's see. Going to Robert Reeves, 4503. Talking about barbecue. And then we'll get the football <laughs> stuff. Don't worry, guys. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting, getting the, the fun stuff, stuff out of the way first. Um, wait, there's barbecue in Auburn. Who knew? When were you going to share? I'm hoping this is sarcasm. Uh, I really, oh, it's really it's definitely sarcasm. I think Def it's probably a long time listener. <laughs> I, if, if that's if that's the that's the wave you're on, Robert. Um, I'm sorry. I know that I'm a, I'm Dylan and I are both barbecue. We're foodies for one, uh, barbecue enthusiasts for sure. Um, I'm partial to Moe's Barbecue in Auburn. I know it's a chain. I know it's a chain, but it is local ownership in Auburn, Alabama. And I'm telling you, the flavor's different. Um, and bow and you arrow. Go, you can also go to Bucky's. <laughs> Bucky's got some nice barbecue. Jesus Christmas. Uh, hey, I can't lie. Dude. As far as local, as far as local, bow and arrow, pretty damn good barbecue over there. Um, locally owned, locally operated since they, since their inception. Great, great options over there. Also, Chuck's barbecue over in uh, Opelika. I mean, come on now, come on now. Give give me a whole damn plate of that bull pork. <laughs> um, so that's that's my whole that's my my shtick. Your your, your thoughts on bar Auburn barbecue, Dylan? Uh, as long as we got pulled pork sandwiches, I'm set. You, it's hard to it's hard to mess up. I stopped at Bucky's last night while I was driving home, it's, and uh, it's just tough to beat a brisket. Like, <laughs> I mean, they got brisket, man. Yeah. I know, I know. I'm just saying, uh, for chain wise and a gas station, I mean, if you just need some quick barbecue, I highly recommend Bucky's. It's a, yeah, not sponsored. No, dude, not, if you, a, not if you. They have get, a Texas cheese. Not if you can get the Mo's. Not if you can get the Bone Arrow. Not if you can get the Chucks. Sorry at, about it. At 9 p.m. at night, you. That's fair. Well, if you, go, Friday, if you go to Mo's at 9 p.m., you might be able to still get food and a bushwhacker at the same time. All right. Well, moving on to JC Money 23 saying Peyton Thorne will be QB1. Lol. What is this show? Um, I don't necessarily know that Peyton Thorne will be QB1. Uh, this is the College Loop. This is the College Loop, home of 507 beautiful people out there. Of the best people in the world. Of the best people. And people who uh who love barbecue that's right <laughs> but also Peyton thorn Peyton thorn has not performed up to uh, qb1 uh <laughs> quite yet if next scrimmage he just turns into like the next time we have jared Stidham, uh i'll agree with you but for right now it's it's holden garner or robbie ashford for me uh yeah i'm in that camp <laughs> actually flip it, robbie ashford or holden garner for me i i think that's how it's it'll be listed on the depth chart yeah robbie truthers we rise. We we ride at dawn for Robbie. <laughs> All right. Now go to our boy Gregorio Duran, 3355, asking a question. My question this week is does Darion Goborn win a championship before Auburn football, basketball, or baseball? And are we rolling tumors when she does win one? He also thanks me for the shout out in the war pour. No problem, Gregorio. I'll always shout you out for making our jobs a little easier with these questions. Uh, so the context here is in WWE and I'm going to be completely honest with you, Gregorio. Yeah. I have never watched WWE in my life. Um, and it's nothing against like wrestling or anything. It's just not my shtick. I'm not a combat sports guy. Um, I watch big card boxing. I do enjoy boxing beyond that. I uh, just can't get into it. Um, but with her raw athleticism, like, I, like maybe <laughs> it doesn't feel out of the picture. Um, I think basketball and baseball are both pretty close. Um, so maybe not, but I feel like if Darion Goborn wins a championship, that that Auburn rolls. Oh, I mean, when we get to later on in the show, talking about some other Auburn sports going on, I mean, that kind of co co, co aligns with that. Uh, but I mean, Darion Goborn, uh, WWE is basically just entertainment contact sport. I mean, more entertainment than than contact sport sometimes. And Darion's ability to work a crowd is definitely in her favor. Oh, she's gonna I, be a rock star. I definitely think that the, the script writers will get her a championship very soon just because it'd be kind of hard not to give the queen her crown. Yo, yeah. Then yeah, you have to, right? You have to. Exactly. And um, then we will, and me and Tar will be there at Tumors the night that she wins 
after hearing about it. She's <laughs> also just awesome. So like I yeah I sure I'll, yeah, I'll roll. I'm down. Great person, great athlete. Even if it's just the three of us, me, you, and Gregorio, we'll, we'll roll. I'm down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll, I'll watch it. You, I don't. I don't know what the hell the schedule is for WWE. I know that there's like a Wednesday night SmackDown. Maybe I'm making that up. Um, I think we should we should just buy the uh, the SmackDown game and do a Darion Goborn career uh, mode or whatever. Then, yeah, no, great, great intern job. If you're looking for an internship, by the way, reach out to us at College Loop. We are looking for another intern. <laughs> and if you own WWE SmackDown 2020, yeah, and we'll <laughs> we'll buy you WWE SmackDown and we'll let you live stream it to the YouTube channel. Um, I was only half joking, by the way. We are looking for another intern. So if you know anyone. <laughs> we hired the last one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good. It, we have a good track record with them. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the next one, Gaming Dreams 2142. I still want the best guy, even if it's Ashford. If he's improved his accuracy, then he stands the chance. I think Ashford is the best guy. I de- I, and I, I think it's between him. It's, it's him and Gurner, definitely. But I, I think if Ashford is improved at all, it's hard to bench the athleticism that he has. I, uh, I mean, first off, gaming dreams. I respect this take. I'm just wanting the best guy. And for your favorite football team, you should want the best athlete uh, at that at yeah. that position. <laughs> um, I'm not being smart ass either. I mean, that's that's a good take. Um, I don't know that Robbie is. I, I don't know. Like, I, I just, it's a good take. I don't I don't really know where else to build on that other than yes, you want Robbie Ashford to improve specifically in the throwing department and this and decision making and maybe being able to tone down um the emotion just a little bit and channel it as opposed to no 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 channel. Like, okay I guess the channel. change it from letting him become a head case to channeling it to playing better there is that good players wear their emotions on their sleeve great players wear the wear it on the sleeves and use it as fuel to be better not to use the quicksand analogy right Timothy not to and cam newton no exactly 100 percent. That, that great examples Harrison Tarr being wishy-washy on what quarterback he wants since December 2022. <laughs> Look, I try to be the most neutral person on this show. Just eh. saying. Well, Just to, saying. Flip, to flip from a Robbie comment, because I mean, I believe there are plenty on here. Uh, to go to a Gurner comment, we got Roz Dog 91.5. Holden is the best QB in the room. Anyone outside of Auburn knows this. If there's a QB in the room that will play on Sundays, it's him. And he also continued on saying, oh, Lord, where did it go? Oh, it was here somewhere. Uh, Let's see. His issue is he doesn't really fit the system Auburn fans think Freeze will run. Nail on the head. I mean, hit the nail on the freaking head. Uh, Agree, 100%. Holden Gurner has what it takes to play on Sundays. It's just he's got to find a scheme that works for him in college. And I, I don't think I don't necessarily think it's at Auburn. Hell, it might be this year. We may find that out in two weeks. But I don't necessarily know that he fits what Auburn and Hugh Freeze and company want to do. Do I think he has all the talent in the world? Absolutely. Do I think he's trapped in the depth chart because he's not talented enough to play? No, not at all. Um, I think that if Holden Gardner winds up elsewhere, like if it doesn't work out at Auburn this year, he could start in the SEC next year. I, I I really truthfully believe that. So uh, I that, I think that's a fantastic take, Dylan. Uh, I I think it's a very very good take. Take, and now you have Kevin Kevin Tuberville. There we go, thirty one thirty four, saying game experience will make Thorne the starter and Ashford will be his backup. That right there, I don't fully agree with strictly because Ashford has game experience, and. Holden technically does have game experience, but I, I understand where you're coming from with game experience, but Ashford has SEC experience. That's that's what gets me. Um, I, I think if we're going with the experience argument, if you were just giving these guys resumes and tell me Peyton Thorne, show me numbers, uh, I'd probably still wind up starting Thorne because of numbers historically. But if you were to tell me you've got a guy that has SEC experience versus a guy that has Big Ten experience, and yes, I am trashing the Big Ten, if you know me, if there's one way I'm a homer, it is an SEC homer because it is the best conference in the country in college football and pretty much all athletics, but college football uh, specifically. I actually don't know that the game experience and number of starts really helps Thorne. Uh, it doesn't hurt him. It certainly doesn't doesn't hurt. But I don't think that that can be a decision-making um, aspect, especially now that Hugh Freeze has seen how he works in his scheme. Um, a lot of folks really want to see Thorne succeed. I'm not saying I don't. I'm just saying – I don't necessarily know that we can presume that just because he transferred in and just because he brings a good season of Big Ten football 
uh, under Mel Tucker, um, which is kind of impressive. But hey, he's still coming. You can't see anything. What say? <laughs> Tuck coming. Yeah, he's coming somewhere. <laughs> he's gonna be on the hot seat. Next question. <laughs> Then we got Derek Roberts, 2571. And we mean you both really agree that we like this one. If the O line is much improved, it's going to be hard to deny Gurner given our talent at the skill positions. And I'm going to leave this one up just because I really like this one. Yeah, no, I'm probably going to just hit retweet on what you say. I mean, looking at what we've been hearing from Gurner, he definitely has the best arm in the room. And with the much improved wide receiver uh, depth that Auburn has not had in uh, forever. Uh, it's going to be kind of hard to not give it to a guy who can make any throw on the field and do that consistently from at least what we've been hearing. And, I mean, I, I think we said, I said it best last show, I think. If Auburn can find a way to have a 3,000-yard passer and a 1,000-yard rusher and probably another probably very close 1,000-yard rusher right behind Jarquez Hunter, Auburn's going to find their way high, like top 15 in the country. And if, if that means that we probably win a couple of games that we shouldn't. If Auburn somehow find, if, if that three thousand yard passer for Auburn is automatic nine wins for me, and then add the fact that Auburn's going to have a loaded back room that's going to probably have a thousand, over a thousand, close to a thousand, probably about five hundred, and dwindle down from there. Auburn is going to find their way at ten to eleven wins if they can find a way to get everything working perfectly, uh, like they'd like it to. But it all depends on how everything trans transcends into uh real life like i said i'm gonna hit retweet on pretty much everything you just said this is a great take uh from from, from Derek roberts uh, 2571 um and and they don't really expand it on it i we mentioned this when we were running through comments for the show this this is a great takeaway yeah and especially with the o-line uh it needs to i i think based on the scrimmage it needs to improve a little bit more in pass protection but run blocking wise i mean this team it's if you can run the ball or open it up for the pass. At, game, at, the, at the very, at the very, bare minimum, Auburn can have four thousand yard rushers, and I think we're just fine. Minimum, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> minimum four thousand yard rushers, or okay. just one four thousand yard rusher, whichever one you want the most. Uh, one of those does it in a Heisman. A college Loop episode one hundred and one. Dylan does drugs. All right. <laughs> As then we got Eric Pearson talking about the quarterback, saying, "I like all four guys." I know Hank isn't really in the discussion yet, but I think he could step in if absolutely necessary. Goes on to say, Robbie was a real trooper last season playing through injury, so I'd love to see him get the job. On the other hand, I want the guy who gives us the best chance to win. Whoever that happens to be will get my full support. War Eagle. So first off, Dylan, you come at me for being wishy-washy. That's annoying. Um, when, when I'm not the only one in this camp here about let's just see who wins this battle. Um, but whatever. Um, this Hank Brown takes good. Uh, I say that because there are a hell of a lot worse options for an emergency quarterback. I mean, a lot that, that you could have. Um, Hank Brown is someone that Hugh Freeze has is familiar with this game. He brought him here for a reason. I don't know exactly what that reason is or how Hank Brown fits, but also at the same time, he's familiar with with the schematics behind what what Hugh Freeze does, um, and, and and kind of knew what to expect coming into this camp has been committed to Hugh Freeze the longest. And I think that in terms of emergency quarterbacks, if you need him to step in, I, I think Hank Brown probably be fine as a, despite being a true freshman um, would not be anyone's choice. One, a just one, the true freshman title does it alone. But two, you've got really three guys that you're really, really interested to see how they shake out. Yeah. Let's really hope that there's never an, a different time this season where Hank Brown has to step in as the emergency quarterback. That's right. That's, That's right. But you're not <laughs> But good take. I mean, not they are certainly way worse options uh, in terms of emergency quarterbacks. You don't have to look that yeah, far like back. Tyler Buckner. Yeah. <laughs> or Ty Simpson. I told you, you don't have to look that far back. I'm, I'm If you don't know, I'm naming Bama quarterbacks if you're unaware. <laughs> uh, let's see the last comment. And this one's kind – I don't know. I don't think this one's very – it's okay. Cam Riley from My World of Sports 1376 saying Cam Riley needs to bulk up and lock in as just being a third down pass rusher and situational guy. So I want to say NFL pays too much money. Uh, pay, NFL pays too money to guys who can put pressure on the quarterback. He was never a basic linebacker, so why try to get him to be someone he isn't? The so, thing is about Cam Riley. Can I ask real quick? Is is do we interpret this as 
Cam Riley needs to just kind of convert to being an edge rusher. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I'm making sure that like that's what like, that's how I'm reading it because uh, for my stance, uh, Cam Riley should just not play linebacker or <laughs> at all. Sure. I mean, look, I okay. I, I, you, let him cook, I guess. Continue. If, if, he's a, but, if he's a line, if Cam Riley's a linebacker, don't let him on the field. And yeah, there's another yeah. guy who brought up the fact that Riley may not start, but he'll probably get more snaps than any other linebacker in that room. Yeah, there's no way that happens because as much crap as I give Wesley Steiner, I would take Steiner over Riley because there were plenty of times last season, and I get it. Off seasons, you can develop and all that nice jazz and stuff. We've not seen it from any of these linebackers outside of Austin Keys. And we've not seen very much of Larry Nixon, but I've heard great things. Eugene Asante, I've heard a lot of great things. I've heard he's developed very well over the summer. Wesley Steiner, dealing with some injuries, but I'm going to go ahead and just take the last four years of him being here into, into now and say that he probably hasn't developed very much. Cam Riley, on the other hand, I think it if he doesn't switch to edge rusher, he does not see the field very much for sure. a game where Auburn is not either up by 40 or down by 40. Sure. I, I Okay. I'm, I'm not getting in the middle of this one. You're going to get too heated with anything I say, even if it's good or bad. So I'm just going to let I you. I mean, I, I think Black could be said it best. I mean, we got to decide if Cam Riley can even play football or not nowadays. Yeah, I mean, agree. I uh, just, and I'm so, I'm so low on these linebackers outside of keys, and I just want to see something. Yeah, show me literally anything. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally uh, anything. Let's keep moving on 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 the rundown. Uh, we've got this Thursday. I'll be a theoretical Thursday. Please, I'm once again asking for your theoretical Thursday content. You'll get a free shout out. Uh, Gregorio has always been great about giving us some. Um, so someone else has to take the reins at some point. Uh, but Gregorio, I can probably trust you, man, to to get us a good one uh, if we don't think of one between now and then. But again, a hey, shout out to everybody uh, for giving them their, our, their takes in the, in the comment section. Now. Yeah, absolutely. That was a ton of fun. I enjoyed that. Let's uh, the more you guys roll in with comments. We've been telling you all along, the more comments you guys give us, the more questions y'all ask us. We are going to engage with as many of them as we possibly can. As long as we keep it PG 13, uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're in good shape there. Um, that's, uh, that's all we ask is just be, be respectful of each other. Uh, on your theoretical Thursdays and follow up questions to whatever. If you have responses to other people's comments, let's see it. Um, like, subscribe, ring the bell while you're right here on YouTube. If you if you are listening to our Spotify stream, our Apple Music, if you're listening on FM Radio on the Moon, um, whatever, uh, hit us on Twitter, um, hit us on Instagram, whatever, Facebook, whatever works best for you. We'll answer your questions there as well. Um, we got our first DM the other day, so that was cool. It's kind of kind of cool. Wasn't yeah, really cool. We got a few. Okay, we got one interesting DM. Um, but uh, anywho, I, I that, that's either here or there. Thank you guys for for dropping all that knowledge on us. And you, you guys, some of you guys really know ball. I mean, not, not that I'm saying I'm a ball knower. Dylan certainly is a ball knower. But like, if we were, we could probably spot other ones. Um, we we got a lot of ball knowers in this community, and that's pretty damn cool. So let's let's keep moving forward, Dylan, and let's talk women's hoops for one quick second. Literally, just want to pop in and drop this news because I was a little bummed. Um, women's basketball's uh, original game scheduled for today, flex to Tuesday, and I think it's niche Fra uh, France. I have no idea. I took French for two years at Auburn and don't even know how to pronounce um, who they're playing. Um, I think it's no, nope, I'm not even going to try. C O T, yeah, <laughs> C -O -T lowercase d apostrophe at, at capital A Z U R, all stars at 7 p.m. local time, which will be noon central time. And just through alphabet soup, but <laughs> you know, I did, at the listeners. I did what I could. All right. <laughs> Another opportunity for this this group of newcomers and, and these, these younger prospects and honestly Scott Grayson um, to go out there and, and keep keep gelling. I really do think this is going to prove beneficial, Dylan, and I'm really excited to see how this correlates um, to women's hoops in 2023-2024. Now, it's happened, Dylan. First tumors rolling of the 2023-2024 athletics year has arrived, and it was so well deserved let's talk and it was about it. For, for a sport that no one really expected it to be about too right <laughs> that's right let's hear it women's golf uh megan Schofield won the u.s women's amateur challenge is that amateur challenge is that what it's called yes it just said women's, yeah, Am, yeah, yeah, so US women's just... u.s women's amateur at bel-air there we go and uh did you get stats for it i 
I just know that she won. I'm looking at her at her scores right now. I looked at them earlier today. Um, let's see. I'm of all my of all my ball knowing skills, golf is not one of them. <laughs> I thought she shot something absolutely ridiculous because she had a uh, she was three up uh, after the first eighteen holes, um, and at one point made a fifty five foot birdie. That was sick, by the way. Fifty five foot birdie putt. Um, yeah, I only do that in mini golf when there's like three elephants in the way on the, on the we course. golf. <laughs> yeah, we golf literally. Um, she's a 22 year old um, grad student entering her fifth, fifth season at Auburn. For those of you who don't know. Um, I'm looking at her. I literally just had her, her score in front of you me. You had her whole bio, but you don't have the score. <laughs> I, dude, I'm telling you, I, I put my notes together. And I didn't keep, pull up her freaking score. Well, I'll, I'll grab that here in just a second as we move forward. I'm going to let you go ahead and talk a but little it, bit. Hmm? I was say it is huge. The 123rd uh, women's women's am winner is from the Auburn Tigers, and uh, and this is wild that they had they got everybody out there rolling the trees for them too. I, I, the volleyball team was out there too. Who we need to start talking about very soon, strictly because uh, they're kind of cracked when it comes to the to the volleyball sports. And I mean, I guess I can, if you're still doing that, I can go find gymnastics has announced their home schedule for the 2024 season. Starting off January 12th, they're going to be playing Kentucky. January 19th, you got Florida. February 2nd, you got Fisk, Talladega, and Temple. For a quad meet, February 9th, you got Bama. February 23rd, you got Missouri. Another team who is actually recruiting very well in the football sport is Missouri right now. Actually, they've got the number three player in the class. But it's going to be a fun season for gymnastics. Make sure to get your tickets because if you missed it last year, uh, they sell out very, very fast. And no, gymnastics sorry. is a very, very fun sport to watch. Uh, I took Lauren, Lauren's first ever. Uh, Auburn Athletics event was gymnastics, and Darion Goborn had her running around screaming like, uh, like she just watched. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Like, think of like how everyone reacted when you saw the kick six. That's how Lauren was running around when she saw Darion Goborn walk out to God Save the Queen. That's what it. That's what it looked like to me. Uh, but overall, just it's going to be a great season for Auburn gymnastics. Uh, even without Sun, uh, Sunny and Darion, I feel like a lot of these girls are really going to. To the face, Cassie Stevens is back. Olivia Hollingsworth is back. So Sophia match, Gross is back. Megan won match play for uh, four three. Sorry, and I was that there was driving me freaking nuts, dude. I saw it earlier today, and it's the only thing I didn't put in my notes. I'm now locked back into Auburn gymnastics. You got me. You got me rambling for about five minutes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, overall, it's going to be a great season for Auburn gymnastics. I well, think I, I think uh, Grave has got Auburn in a in a great spot right now. Yeah, well, when you look at look at opponents, they're going to be headed to Neville Arena, um, Kentucky, Florida, Alabama, Missouri. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, like you you won there um, because you want Florida, Missouri, and Alabama. Certainly, you want to have them all at home. <laughs> um, obviously, Alabama would be a different uh, different story. Um, those home crowd environments matter a lot. Like you mentioned, your, your girlfriend absolutely loses her mind. Um, mine as well, myself as well, you as well. We lose our voices at gymnastics like we would at basketball. Um, the SEC is low to top to bottom in gymnastics. This is not news to anybody. Uh, but Auburn returning a ton of talent and, and a lot of young talent too. A lot of people, there are a lot of people were really excited to see. Um, they lucked up on this draw in terms of like this is being your home slate. God is good. Um, God is God is very very good in that in that regard and certainly plays favorite um, to Auburn in that that discipline. My only other note I had for the show today, uh, uh, Dylan, is the biggest commitment of the day. Uh, Hugh Freeze's daughter, Maddie, rushes Kai Omega. So um, potential um, uh, potential big commitment from uh, the Freeze camp. Uh, <laughs> Kai O. Um, I'd be interested to see where 24-7 has them in the um, composite rankings. If you're not watching the YouTube stream, Dylan is so irate that I said that online, on the live air, but it'll be okay. I thought it was funny. He posted it. He was proud of her. He showed oh, there, Yeah. Yeah, as most parents would do. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. I'm waiting for you to say another word that's going to maybe just punch you through the camera. <laughs> oh, that you're just going to slay the sorority yeah, now? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, before um, Dylan absolutely blows me into a blitter and oblivion. Before the three-hour drive to Macon, just strictly for an absolute beatdown. <laughs> well, Dylan's feeling a little bit loopy. Just as a reminder, you can pick up your very own college loop 
War Report Podcast Network, co-branded Feeling Loopy t-shirt on www.thewarreport.com. You can also grab that link from our description here on the show, anywhere you're watching or listening to the show. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, not on Facebook, well, I mean, I, I, that'd be weird, but yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, excuse me, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for hanging out. Comments have been fantastic. Make sure you like, subscribe, ring the bell. Over 500 dances. Also, tell us what TikTok dance. Start DMing us those TikTok dances you want to see. You can DM them to us on TikTok and tell us if you want to see Colin do this. Um, thirst traps are encouraged. Yeah, absolutely encouraged. Um, so um, that's that – he is just a mere – uh, recent departure from his internship after all. Uh, thank you guys so much for everything. You guys uh, have, have supported us through 101 episodes, 500 subs on YouTube. This is freaking crazy. You guys are absolute dogs, and we appreciate you all. Uh, I think it's 506 or 507, Dylan, is that where we're at right now? Uh, we're at 507. 507, so I have a 507 way tie for my favorite subscriber, 506, because I'm actually one of the subscribers, um, because I like to stay up to date on everything that we post on the loop. I like, like subscribing, ring the bell. Um, Beyond that, my, my name is Harrison Tarr. I, you, you can find my – I'm really tripping over my words right now. I'm going to try again. I'm Harrison Tarr at by Harrison Tarr on the Bird app, on the X app, whatever you want to call that. Also at by Harrison Tarr on threads if you want to come hang out with me. More than welcome to do so there. Dylan's going to roll his eyes every single time. I will tell him to slay the showdown and tell us all where we can be found on social medias. Good Lord, I just hate you so much. Yeah, that's right. But I'm Dylan Lark at your boy the tank on Twitter or X, it redirects either way. Uh, if you're looking for it, it's just right here next to me at Y A B O I the tank, also in the description below for whatever service you are watching or listening to us on. And if you want to follow the college loop, you can find us literally everywhere social media wise Twitter, slash X, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. All that jazz. Halfway to a MySpace, bro. We're halfway there. Halfway to a MySpace. That's <laughs> wild to think about. Colin is shaking in his boots, man, because he has to do a TikTok dance, and he immediately has to turn around and start getting together for a MySpace, too. And then what? We said <laughs> And then 5,000 is Reddit. 5, is a Reddit. <laughs> Dude, oh, my Lord. All right, well... If you listen to the show, of course, if you're tired of seeing our faces, I completely understand. But you have us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, pretty much everywhere you get your podcasts. And with all that being said, thank you for 500. Thank you for getting us to 100 episodes. And with all that being said, this has been the College Loop Podcast. 